We'll be talking about the colors here, but there's really nothing special. I mean, this is pretty much your standard pet. I'm just going to count. So 4, 7, 10, 12. So kind of the usual 12. Else today's bit around how the heck are you guys doing? So it's kind of the usual 12. You got your brilliant yellow pale over here. You got your white. Got a little bit of cadmium yellow deep. Terra Rosa, Fanchon Red. These guys, nothing special. Indigo, Black Spinel, that's your Van Dyke Brown. Down here, you got your Berlin Black, Indian Yellow, Prussian Blue, then a little bit of the Asphaltum right over there. Hey, Josh, nice to see you. Uh, so you're doing more of the 15 mil figures, Bithron. Uh, hopefully you're, uh, well, let's see. Now, any news about back or not back or whatever in LCDs, I hope that you're doing well. So, Josh, I, saw, I got the alert. Was it today that you were trying out? Was it a new camera setup or something like that? Uh, well, if everybody could please give Josh a follow, that would be fantastic. So, Risdom Design, I hope things are going okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to divvy this up like we normally do here. Something like this. And then we'll do that here. So, let's divvy this into our nine sections. We do this all the time. And then we'll talk about, well, what's the deal with that? All right. I think we need to move this one over just a smidge there. Okay. These four areas, these are the ones that we want to target with some center of interest. And if you look at this picture right here, or even the one over there, you can see pretty much kind of this is your area of center interest, or maybe even this over here. But we don't want it in the center. We don't want it stuck over here, right? Ah, all today's is uh, hey Shaza, how you doing? So all today's uh, now is were there any figures that you chose to jump in on first? Yeah, let's grab one of our landscapes over here. So you, as you can see, we've got an interest over. We even got something over here, but they're more like these quadrants. They're not not way over there. Certainly not in the center. I mean, there's some things going on there, but that's not going to be. We don't want center of interest to be in the center, right? We're always trying to shoot that off to the, one of these other locations. Ah, new bench setup. Okay. I knew there was something new about your setup. I couldn't remember what that was. Sorry, the, the camera is kind of in the camera boom is in the way of the chat right now because of where it's at. Uh, so, yeah, I guess, uh, well, Kathy has, uh, that, that, was, that was the picture that I sent to you, Armored Wolf. Actually, I think, uh, Bithron, I sent you that picture as well. All right, let's start to draw some stuff here. Now, a horizon line, well, we certainly don't want it in the center, right? That's another reason why we got these, because we want our horizon line to either be up here or down here. And it might be more interesting if it is down here. So if this is going to be a horizon line, that means, well, this ship's going to go over here, and this is where our little center of interest locale is, right? Yeah, let's have move this ship down just a smidge here. Uh, it's kind of funny as I was doing some research on this. Apparently, Lego made Corsair ships, like as in Lord of the Rings Corsair ships. So it must have been merchandising. Gosh. Now, Return of the King, what would you say? It's 2005-ish or something like that. Here, let's get another one of our boats over there too. I'm also going to get to my reference picture here so that I can see that just a smidge better. And I think we're going to have our mountain go up to here. Again, we want to cross this this one section here, right? Now we've got ourselves another. Hey, let's move this one down a bit more, maybe. And this one. Yeah, if we move this one down a little further. There's more space for this one. Let's get these sails. We don't have to draw anything precise, but we're just going to try and maybe, I don't know, have some kind of a uh, city here. There are some, some flames sitting here in the background. All right, there's our horizon. Line. Maybe that goes a little bit further back. Uh, let's see. Uh, move the bench closer to the door so it's cooler while it's in the garage. Uh, lost the piece of Sayed and Snow Mean. Uh, boy, let me let me see if I've got. Nope, that's that's not him. There he is. Um. Let's see. Is it? 
I think this is just part of him. I'm trying to think of what's the upper... Is it part of the reins here, maybe? Is that what you might be looking for? Because this is a... Well, it doesn't matter whether it's the starter box or not. That is the that is the figure, the same figure in the starter box. And just... Uh, hey, Pendrick, how are you doing? So I think we're all caught up. Maybe we'll use some green stuff just to cover that spot. Ah, all, all today's... Uh, well, you never know, right? Also, too, the Lord of the Rings figures, well, the newer ones, they assemble a little bit differently. So they went with these type of rigs here for their sales. I I had thought about the other you know, non-movie type black ships. And it's interesting when you see they actually have metal on these things. Here, we might try and do a little bit of a hybrid here. And then you got this, the extension here on the aft end of the ship. And then there's uh, basically like a bunch of shields that run along here. Hey, Grim, how you doing? There we go. Yeah, it always makes me think of the nine-masted uh, ships. Of, was it Shun Tzu, I think it was? No, Jun Hua, Hua. I think that was the guy that uh, they had those, was it two or three of those 500 foot long treasure galleons? Maybe we won't have this here. Maybe we'll move this further back over here. That might be better. Get our mountain back there. And then we have our clouds here so that we can maybe darken this up. But these will be definitely not super easy to make in uh, in 28 mil with these type of rigs, that's for sure. So not necessarily looking forward to that. And now when the guy, I saw an article on you know how to make these things in 28 mil, and he recognized, I think it was three different Corsair ships, three distinct different sizes. Like, even this one right here has only two two masts, whereas this one actually has three. I think he noticed at least two different distinct sizes of ships. Uh, that's the front part of the saddle. This also covers part one of Thaden's leg. But, uh, let me... Where the heck did I just put him in there? Let's see. So, oh, is it... It's not this part. Maybe it is that part over there. Yeah, I guess it could be. Not sure. It's been so long since I put this one together, else it is. I just don't remember. Uh, let's see. So procrastinating on starting on the next miniature. Ah, Grim, uh, if you want to post your uh, Instagram pic of uh, the one that I just saw not long before uh, we started here. Well, you could do that so people can see all the neat stuff that you've been doing with the oils. Now, it's going to be a while before I even think about playing around with that liquid. There's there's a whole bunch of videos that I have to shoot of other other subjects. So it'll be it's going to be a good long time before we mess around with the liquid, that's for sure. Uh, I think we're all caught up now, right? So again, sorry that it's a bit tough for me to see the chat now. What's interesting is that there's another, I'm just going to see if I can get to that. Ah, see, that one is very interesting. Ah, but they just, uh, looks like they just took a whole bunch of different pictures and kind of conglomerated that together. Okay, so that's what they did on that one. I'm thinking, where did that picture come from? All right, so we're just going to say that the drawing is in place, which means we're just going to hopefully snap a quick picture of this here. And, of course, the camera is not where I need it to be. So let me see if I can go get that thing here. And I'm guessing that there is no SIM card in here, which means I'm going to... Yep, one second here. All right, so apologies for the delay there. I was using this to transfer pictures from the latest video, and we'll show you that in just a second here. I just want to make sure we get our pictures of this. Where the heck did he go? Ah, here he is. 
So this is the latest video of, well, I don't know if I'll be editing this tonight, but probably tomorrow. This is the latest one in the chapter study, so a little bit of Blood Angels here. Uh, we finished it off with the free hand. That was our last segment there, but lots of the, well, your non-metallic metal, lots of reflections and such. So that was very fun. Uh, let's see. So, oh yeah, the Owl Mage. And let me see what else we got here. Uh, so Shaza, I'm not surprised that that uh, that went just a wee bit viral, right? Yeah, not not surprised, not surprised. Now, what we've got here. Let's see if I can break out a couple of these. So these are those new brushes here. Since we found out that, what is it? Uh, Rosemary, they don't ship There's any sables of any kind to the United States because of environmental bans and all this other kind of stuff. We got these. We're, we're basically doomed to the synthetics all the time. So we, we're trying these out here. I have no idea if these are going to work. I basically just got kind of one of each different thing uh, just to try it out to see if anything works. Or they might all be terrible. They could all be absolutely useless. So be be ready for every single one of those to be as bad as all the other brushes we tried. Now here, speaking of good brushes, this is one of those flat brushes that we turned into a filbert. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, well, there's only two of those things left. So of the four miniatures that originally were up on eBay, this, a second one went away today. So they're they're moving. They are going away fast, I guess. There's only two left at least in this initial uh in this initial blast so those are the artisan guild figures and uh, actually right now there's just there's one artisan guild and one titan forge left the other two artisan guilds those are already gone and again we don't really worry too much about the the drawing itself we can still see it kind of sort of underneath all this all that is is indigo, touch of the brilliant yellow pale, which is a little bit different than some of the skies we've been doing, where we've been taking the brilliant yellow pale and the Prussian blue. So look at the difference between the two colors. Uh, let me see. So I think we're all set. So uh, now she's is he all done? Because I don't think uh, I don't know if Kathy showed me one of the picks this morning or not. I, I don't remember if I saw the, the latest of that. Okay, here, we're just going to get a little bit of our lighter color up there. And yes, all very much a dry brush, right? You can see there's not a lot of paint on there. Now we're going to go back to that really yellow pale, probably... I'm going to maybe grab a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown here. And what I'm hoping to do is make something. Ah, so it's a little bit warmer now. That's what we're looking for here. Maybe a bit more of the thinner so that it flows nice and easy. Don't mind just scumbling that in there. Let's find some more of that lighter tone up here. Lots of grays in this, I'll tell you that right now. Warm grays, cool grays. That was the other reason I wanted to do this here. Just to show people that, well, you can do an awful lot with just grays. So again, I will try and keep track of the chat as best as I can. It, if, there's a, if there's some gaps in, when, in me seeing things, I apologize. Because on my one monitor is the reference picture, and on, well, the monitor that I usually look at, well, that's kind of blocked by a camera boom right now. Oh, and Chris, uh, Grip, thanks for setting up all the Discord stuff. Uh, obviously, that's just something we don't have any time for. All right. Maybe let's start to pop in some 
something that's a little darker here. Maybe even a bit of the black spinel here. All of a sudden, what was dark starts to become light, right? And as I start doing this little scumbly thing, it starts to blend and mix, doing all that fun stuff. You might get a little smidge of some blue in here. Not all, just that warmer tone. Also, maybe not too dark. Okay. We need some of that dark over, over here. Yeah, we do. Let's just fill this in. All we're looking to do, just like our miniatures, right? This is the pre-glaze. That's all this is here. Hey, Imperfect Ideal, nice to see ya. Hi, <laughs> Imperfect was watching a recorded stream. Well, Imperfect, I'm glad that you could hang out for a little bit here. I hope that maybe just as time goes on here, things get a little bit easier. Maybe a little less crazy. Of course, I don't want to jinx nothing by saying that because, yes, <laughs> believe me, you can jinx things. There's a few phrases never say, and I'm not even going to say what they are because if you do, it's just asking for it. Hey, Lady B, nice to see you. Uh, so, Lady B, speaking of uh, hopefully everything's okay, hopefully things have been okay for you. It's been a wee while. I know this is probably an easier time for you to be able to watch. Let's get some of our clouds way back here in the distance. This is interesting. It's a very different type of sky from all the other ones that we've done, which are pretty much bright daylight skies. I thought that was another interesting thing about this, a type of sky we have not painted yet. Yeah, so Grim, I, I really appreciate you doing that. It just, like you, you and I were talking about, I just, I was trying to visualize some way of making that work. I mean, it would it would be nice, but well, now we got yours. And I think you got the link there, right? Yes, there's the link to it. Uh, actually, Grim, I think, uh, I think it actually did, uh, I think it did some good because yeah, you know, we have uh, we actually have 27 folks in here early on, right? Even for an early stage like this. So I think uh, Grim, I would call that successful. So thanks so much for doing that. I appreciate that. So say we all. So say we all. Ah, look who's look who's back. He 11 months. Look at that, Al. How the heck are you doing? Al oh, and. Uh, I have you, 1977, so how are you doing? Nice to see you as well, and thank you so much for joining us here. Ah, so it did announce it right away. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think that really did something. Because I, I looked at the thing and I went, that's a lot of folks for early on, especially in one of our, just a 2D art stream here. So yeah, Grim, I think that was very cool. I think it worked out really well. But see all the little scumly? Look at that. Even though there's not a lot of paint down there, it's still mixing up nice and easy. So, Al, I hope that you've been doing well. I, I don't know if you saw last week's landscape, but here's the one that we did last week. And, well, here's the one from the week before. Like so. Oh, actually, let's uh, look at the difference in these skies here. It's quite the difference in the sky, isn't it? Wow. That's really wild. Uh, now I'm extra glad, extra glad we're doing this one here because I think that's going to be very fun. Uh, so thanks, Lady B. Appreciate that. Okay, this mm, might just get a little bit of asphaltum in there. A little bit of the asphaltum. Warm this up just a smidge. We we want it to be on the darker end of things. But I think we also want some asphaltum in there. 
Hey, where's Squirtle and Angry Ham? Ah, so Bithron has a heat warning. It's kind of interesting that, uh... Hello, uh, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Thank you so much, Bio. I appreciate that. Hello, little hobbits. Of course, there is a bumbar. Um, the uh, Aragorn, uh, you might want to get on that. You might want to get... Wait, wait a minute. I know just the thing for these guys. Yeah, wait a second. Ah, oh, come on, man. Seriously? Dude, just because I might have done a little bit of perform enhancing drugs in my racing days, you want me, you want me to run across that water and go after those guys? I think not. Uh oh, I guess Gandalf was asking a little bit too much right there. Hey, Acid Burn, nice to see you too. So, War Squirtle, I hope that you're doing good. Oh gosh, what is this? Uh, it's not Friday here yet. Like it's still, I'm going to say it's a happy Thursday because it's still not Friday yet. Now this water actually is going to get some, or this landscape here is actually going to get a little bit of our blue in it. But look, look at what I'm doing. See, I'm just kind of putting this brush on its side here. Look at this. I used to do that stuff with watercolors. This is absolutely hilarious. Uh, so it's still Thursday for War Squirtle 2. So see, it's a it's a legit it's a legit thing to say it's still Thursday. No, it's it's certainly gonna be Thursday for a while for Armored Wolf 2 as we got Deuce in here. Uh, life has been keeping busy, I haven't painted as much as I like, been playing a bit of guitar and doing some other music things. Well that's really cool, Al. I'm glad that you've been able to enjoy some some other stuff too. I mean, we you know, we love our miniature painting and all. Uh, let's see. Uh, let me let me see something. When she'll catch up with the backlog <laughs> and the other lies we tell. Ah, uh, so acid burn doing a little bit of a phone watching here. With uh, while visiting the in-laws. So here we're just gonna let all that stuff kind of mix together and get. We got our boats right here. We haven't lost sight of them. Don't worry about it. We just gotta get our land masses in here. And I think I'm just going to bring in a little bit of this now. Yeah, we just want to cover up as much as we can of that well i almost said canvas but we're talking hot press illustration board and once again we're going to just try and snap some pictures along the way here because people well really seem to like these so let's just keep doing that ah steelhead nice to see you uh view is from the future friday is kind of blah so far well, uh, we know that Angry Ham and Lady B, they are far in the future. Of course, not as far in the future as Steela is, because Steela is uh, months ahead in the future from we, where we are. So if, if Steela comes in here, we'll have to ask her what's going on in the far distant future of several days from now. Ah, and Lady B got, got your first resin print last night. That's cool. All right, where's our, I think that's our mizzen mass there, so. And of course, these are what inspired, well, which inspired which? Was it the orc ships that inspired us to do the black ships? I think it was the black ships that inspired us to paint the orcs with the black sails, right? Instead of red sails. Yeah, she is. We know that uh, we know that Stila is in the distant future, right? She she's the one that tells us everything that's going to happen. Well, at least we hope she does, and she doesn't just keep all that future info to herself. We need to know. All right, now we're just going to try and get the hole just sketched out here. It's all we need to do. And then we've got our smaller ship back here. Just give it a little bit of an impression. Then let's pull the backdrop there too. 
Uh, Lady B, no, uh, she is not restricted to that kind of time restraint. Stila is several days in the future. She has already claimed that, so we're we're not we're only doing what Stila has claimed that she lives several days in the future. She's ahead of all of us. Uh, let me see. Yeah, for whatever reason, she never seems to have that information. She never seems to have that info, for whatever reason. Not sure why. Uh, let me see. So, Steelhead, I hope that you're doing well. But I think what it was, well, obviously I've been talking so much about doing the Corsair ships, uh, making the terrain, right? So it just kind of got me thinking about when those orc ships arrived and I saw the kind of sails that they had, the way they were rigged, I said, oh, man, we just, we got to do, we have to do those orc ships in, with black sails. Now, this, again, is just one of those two-masted. Uh, we're just using one of our junky brushes here. That's all we're doing. Here, let's get some more of our, yeah, let's get some more of that darker tone right into here. We'll, we'll modify this, manipulate this. We got lots of things we're going to be doing here, but for right now, I can see I've got to move this sail up and aft. I almost thought that said drop kick bears. So now I was thinking that those are bears that play footy. Because, I mean, why wouldn't bears want to play footy? All right, we got our three masts there. Hey, Art Michael, nice to see you. All right, ah, that's what I'm looking for is one of these guys. Going to start to maybe find some darker elements here on our ship. This is pretty much just some Van Dyke brown right here. There's a lot of metal on these things, well, at least on the on the Lord of the Rings ships from the movies. I don't know. I've I've seen a whole bunch of different artwork of these. Some of them look more like Viking long ships. These are sort of a cross between Chinese junks and triremes. Uh, it's sort of, kind of, almost like an amalgam of the two. Ah, so Bu has a ska cover band and dropkick bears. That's the name. And and I guess. Uh, I don't know if dropkick bears are as much into honey as regular bears. Or are they are they really good fishers? Are they good fishermen? Are they more like was it Kodiak bears that are big into fishing? I'm gonna just chuck a little bit of the darker tone here on these sails again. All I need to do is just sort of establish where the heck this boat is. That's all I need to do. We'll have to get some crew on that. Let's go back to the not distant future, but our distant background here. Uh, to have seen animals try playing with human toys before. A moose calf uh, got onto a swing right next to you once. Ah, uh, I see. So, uh, well, let's see. What is it? It's uh, it's it's Melbourne. No, no, no. That's uh, where are the kangaroos? Where are the roos? No, the the roos aren't from Melbourne. You got your Sydney swans. North Melbourne, I think that's it. All right, we. Also, we want to make sure we get some of that fire in here, too. We want some flames maybe even reflecting down onto the water. 
Yeah, Pendrake, the, well, there's, uh, they use, uh, DAOs are pretty much uh, ubiquitous in a lot of places, aren't they? The lots of, mo mostly kind of a river type of a ship. So those are kind of everywhere, aren't they? I just want to get, make sure I'm all caught up here. Uh, again, it, it's a little bit tough for me to see the chat because uh, you know, once I'm not necessarily using my reference picture as much, I can maybe uh, let have just more of the chat showing. But right now, my window is all about my reference. All right. We have that sale there. We need this sale separated, and then we need a little clearance between this sale and the deck. Hey, Al. Yeah, it's, uh, that's why, uh, well, Al, it's just it's kind of the same thing with the miniatures, right? The same thing kind of happens there. You know, you... One minute it's pre-glazed, the next minute, you know, poof. Something like this guy here. Hey, Goliath, how you doing? Nice to see you again. It's been a little while. And uh, it was actually it kind of the same thing happened with this one, too. This, this is the latest video that we did for the Patreon page right here. This one was very fun. It's part of our chapter studies. What the heck is my Imperial Fist? There he is. So this was the first one, and both of those painted in oils. We're going to be running our way through a whole bunch of different uh, chapters. Hey, Calvadia. Nice to see you again. Thanks for, thanks for joining me on one of the 2D art streams here. I always appreciate that. Let's see if I can't go just a smidge lighter back here. I think that could be interesting. Yeah, a little bit lighter here, and then if we got firelight going over here, that would be good too. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Al, I just did that. Uh, I'll be editing that one tomorrow, so that should be pretty fun. Go back to my cloud color here, and that might... Uh, mean a little bit more of my Van Dyke Brown here. I'm going to throw just a little bit of the thinner in here. Get that to flow a little bit more. We still have blending brushes like so. Even though that looks like it's dry, guess what? It's not dry. And if I throw a little bit of thinner in that, it would completely reactivate all that color too, which is kind of neat. Ah, uh, Calvetti, yeah, we just uh, we've only been at this 34 minutes. Yeah, it it's uh, it's been going fast, I guess you could say. Yeah, we've only been at it 34 minutes. I get something like this, I think. Aha. Uh -huh. So I needed some kind of a lighter color also, too, to make the sails stand out a bit more. Uh, same over here, too, I think. The lighter this is, the more we're going to see of those sails. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, again, just uh, 35 minutes in. So not too late. This this is the pre-glaze, right? That's what we always call it. It's pretty much just the pre-glaze. It's the same thing where we just kind of splash color all over the place on the miniature and wipe it away with the sponges, and then we come back with some of our darks and lights and mid-tones. And we take another picture of this here. That's why the camera's sitting in front of the camera. Let's get back to it here now. I might just do a, a wee bit of 
darkening here with a little bit of our indigo. I might just need some thinner in that. I don't want that to be too dark, though. I'm going to come back to a little bit of the really yellow pale. Where's that indigo again? More indigo. It's a little bit more blue. Maybe even a little more blue. So see how that kind of, we're foreshortening the water. That was just like a big old flat thing. Now it's starting to foreshorten. That's starting to wander back a little bit. Acorn Mechanical, nice to see you. Acorn, Acorn Mechanical pledges fealty to Gondor. Now that, that's where these guys are headed. Next stop, Gondor. Next up, maybe a little visit to Minas Tirith. A little bit of pillaging. A little bit of destruction. Happy little pillaging Vikings here. Or happy little pillaging uh, Corsairs, Pirates. And I might just let a few of these little waves crest over here. Happy little waves, like so. All right, so see that, that again, that's just to anchor this, push this lighter stuff further back. That's what we need. Hey, Nixel, how are you doing? Yeah, Nixel, actually, there is a thing, serious, all kidding aside, there is a, a form of miniature painting. They're referred to as flats, and they are just, they're, it's like a very uh, narrow bas relief type of a thing, and that's a. Uh, I, there's whole painting competitions based on those flats. It's it's not a painting. It's not a miniature. It's kind of in between the two, and we actually have one of those. Now we have two of those here somewhere. I don't know where the heck they're at, but they're around here somewhere. And it's pretty pretty interesting. People are really into those things. But uh, yeah, like you say, here we're just doing our regular, our regular flat, flat. Ah, uh, Corn Mechanical is uh, building an Auric Trike. Is that from the, was that Speed Freaks or is that the new, uh, the new Orc box? Now, uh, Art of Michael, they're actually, uh, they're actually made out of pewter. Because well, really easy to cast, right? It's just a, uh, it's just a poor, you know, a, a one piece mold. So super easy to cast. Actually, if it hadn't been for all of the craziness last year, probably would have been painting at least one of those on well YouTube Live. It's a whole different universe, that's for sure. Uh, Nixel, the one true brush is everywhere. That's what we are using right now. If you look at all the other 2D landscapes that we've done, they all begin with the one true brush. Well, first they begin with a pencil, but they all begin with the one true brush, just like any miniature, because there's no difference in my approach to this than there is to a miniature. It's exactly the same composition, essentially pre-glaze, you start to develop your lights and darks more. You start to develop a little bit more of your details. There is no difference between the two. Obviously, one might just be a little flatter than the other one, but aside from that, no differences. All right, what is going on here? I'm actually just going to try and hammer that with a little bit of light. Dude, I wouldn't be surprised if they actually had a 75 mil flat. I wouldn't be surprised to hear about that because uh, some of the folks that, well, have their ear also paint those those flats. I, it would be neat. I would really love to paint one. It's just uh, I don't know when I would ever get a chance to get to one. All right, I'm going to let a little bit of the S Fultum get in there because I would like to warm that up. And then cut down that hillside just a smidge there. And then maybe lighten this area up. 
right there. So again, we're, this is, well, it's the one true brush, but it, this one's been a little bit more, shall we say, used than the other one. Ah, so the, it's the Christmas ornament acid burn. That, that makes a lot of sense, right? That completely makes sense. Uh, what is it, like a flat of Sophie or something? I, I would imagine that's what it is, or something like Sophie, but have to be. Uh, see this? This is the scumbling that we talk about on miniatures all the time. It's easier to see here because, well, this is a little bit bigger. That's the other reason why I like to do these paintings here, because you get to see things a little bit more than you can on just a little 28 mil fig, right? Uh, nope, Nixel. I don't even know where it's at, and we're doing our landscapes of Middle Earth for the foreseeable future on Thursday. And if we're not doing that, we would be doing our terrain, because it would be back to Terrain Thursdays after all. So the flat, uh, don't even know where that's at. It is, it is long since disappeared into the ether. Speaking of ether, we need to make some of this distant background disappear. Ah, see that? See what I just did right there? That is, that is supreme wordcraft. Ah, so it's a Sophie flat surrounded by reeds. Well, that uh, that kind of makes sense, right? And the fun thing is, I can still use a blending brush even even on 2D paintings here. Look at that. It's the same thing that we would do on a miniature. Plop that color on there and just start pushing it around, right? Now I think uh, let's see I don't know what I don't know what day August twenty fourth falls on but we'll be actually painting well we're gonna be painting some oh what the heck oh signum that's it some signum figures oh geez I have to write them back to let them know that the box is here okay we're gonna have to cut some more of our waves in this I just want to see what's going on over here in this uh, again the more distant background over here. Let's get some of our thinner into this now. And I think this can be somewhat darkened. But we still have, we want to have some flames over here on this landscape. So we got to figure out just what we're doing there. Maybe even some black smoke, but Let's play around with some here. Let's just get some of this and some of our phantom. Ooh, and a little bit of the Indian yellow, too. And I think we would like to have some of our flame up against that sail. Nice little contrasty thing right there. Some more of this. And we can still lighten this up. We're just trying to figure out, okay, where do we want some of our flames to go? Maybe some of that right along the coastline here. Because that's something we could reflect into the water. Boy, there's an awful lot of... Uh, a lot of folks that try have tried to build Corsair ships. As I look around... Uh, I was looking around for reference for this, and I, I saw an awful lot of Corsair ships that people tried to make out of, well, various materials. Now, look at how dark that is compared to our white. So what you're seeing here, obviously, we're going to be going lighter than that. Get some of this, some Indian yellow. Maybe a little touch of our fanchion red, just so that doesn't get too, too yellow. Let's see if we can pop in some, some real firelight here. We might have to also throw some darker stuff, but I wanted to do some smoke. 
Gonna have smoke coming off of these fires, so let's see if we can do some smoke here. Where there's smoke, there's fire, right? And speaking of some smoke, how about some Van Dyke Brown? And some smoke here. Let's just scumble this. Same here. It's going to have to bisect their mountain there. I'm going to also just do a little tiny bit of thinner. And all that does is just kind of activate it a bit more. Okay, now it crosses over our mountain just a little bit. Well, Grim, just like we were talking about, right? Uh, if you like mangoes, if you like mangoes, you can make your own Indian yellow. Maybe that's why the Indian yellow has always had kind of a fruity taste. And we're just using our blending brush here, going after some of these edges. That's why I didn't get too crazy about the mountain here as far as putting details on it. Also, that's why I left it uh, a little bit lighter because, well, how the heck is the smoke going to show up, right, <laughs> if the mountains are too dark? Uh, she's a, it's a, <laughs> it's how the paint is made. It's extra fun. It's extra fun. It's even more fun than licking paint. It's making paint. Especially, uh, well, the possibility of how Indian yellow is made. <laughs> uh, let's just say that you feed a cow a mango or two or three or four. You wait for him to, shall we say, uh, relieve himself, and then you take, uh, you potentially take that liquid right there, and uh, that's what you use to make Indian yellow. So, uh, so that means, I guess, that Indian yellow apparently is very healthy and non-acidic because it's made from mangoes. Well, mangoes, linseed oil, safflower oil. Well, let's see. Did, does Williamsburg put safflower oil in theirs? Whoops, wrong one. There's Indian yellow. Nope, just linseed oil. Yep. See, look at that dairy. Look at it's made from. It is made from cows. Look, it's it's dairy lied yellow. So it is made from uh, cow weings. So, uh, yeah, Grim, I think that's indisputable evidence. You cannot argue with that, that it is, in fact, made from cows. So I, th I think we got it. I think we have solved the mystery of the Indian yellow and how it is made. Gee whiz, am I going to have to make a different Rohan background with flames painted like this? Because this is kind of fun. I haven't really done something like that. Well, either way, I don't know. I could, I could see that going either way. Here, why don't I get a little bit of my lighter color in here, and then the smoke is going to stand out that much more. Yeah. Something like this. Oh, we still got our blending brush right here. Yeah, smoke stands out even more now. We're going to have to get some more, a couple of lighter areas on the sails. Oh, this, uh, well, we're going to have some yellow in this now. Because uh, we apparently we were just using this on our flames not long ago. No, no, no. I want the 
that's what we need. We need a little bit of our esfoltum in there. Ah, uh, Landrast, how you doing? Oh, actually, just uh, if if Thunderdome Drew raids us, uh, I have no idea if he's already done with this stream or not. But if he raids us, it I believe it's his birthday today, so people could wish him a happy birthday there. Uh, I do believe that's what he said in his post earlier today. So that's just uh, that's just a little FYI right there. Ah, yeah. Now warmer. Sales come forward. Like they do, of course. I want to see if I can... Ah, what the heck. We'll just use... Just use this right here. Maybe a little bit of our Van Dyke Brown. Is that Landrast? Over here. This is really, uh, it's definitely got me interested in making the Corsair ships, I'll tell you that. Now, the one thing, uh, oh, actually, Landris, I meant to ask you, did the printing goes ever on? Is there a recent email that they just sent? Does he have the supported ones? Because he always, uh, he always releases the unsupported ones first, right? Because I think someone else also only has the unsupported ones out right now. I have been downloading files. Not that I can do anything with them right now, but we are still downloading them. Okay, just a few are supported so far. All right, that I thought I was missing something for a second, but then I realized, well, nah, Landris, uh, Landris makes his own supports. If Landris needs supports, it's just like Zathras. If Landris needs supports, Landris will make them. Because Landris knows a whole bunch more about the printing things. A whole bunch more. And let's look at there's there's still enough. There's still enough paint there for this to do some nifty little mixing. Alright, this got some of the asphaltum in it. I'm gonna see if I can't work in the gunnel from the other side here on our starboard side. Yeah, so I can sort of see some of the deck. Now I did the, I think the arch villain was one of the first ones I did. I will say, what's, what's actually Monster Mini Mayhem? That is one of the easiest ones to do. And arch villain is kind of painful. They basically have to do all that stuff just a little bit at a time. Okay, now what, what was this last thing? What's the most recent thing that Archvillain did as far as their theme? Uh, I, uh, which one has more of an oriental theme to it? Is it the, or more of an Arab type theme to it? Uh, it's not Lost Kingdoms. I don't think it's tight. Maybe it's Titan Forge. I just I haven't really even seen much in the way of images. I don't even know what the oh I think Monster Mini Mayhem is like a bunch of insects or something. I wasn't super interested in that one. All right, now I think now now we're getting a little bit more of our sales going on here. Deuce is covered in sunscreen. That is, uh, now of course, again, you know, different locales, different uh, times and conditions. I'm just thinking, I don't need sunscreen right now. Uh, being midnight, uh, so it is now, it's now Friday. I guess we can say happy Friday. At least to me, I can. I can say happy Friday to myself, apparently. Well, let's, what are we going to do with this little guy way back here? We'll just uh, have that be one of the two masters, I think. I'm going to 
take some of my lighter sky color here and we're just gonna fade this back drop a smidge because I think it's just going to be easy to see what is going on with this thing if there's not a second very obvious hill right there so that's a little better and then two we're also going to fade that edge like so I'm going to snap a quick picture of this now that we got our flames and smoke kind of in our general vicinity. Boom, there we go. Hey, Nary Field. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Bu, they're... Uh, I just, like you say, I have to load them one little bit at one, basically one file at a time, or at least you know, a couple of folder, one folder at a time, right? So, Narrowfield, I hope that you're doing well. Uh, now I can say it, happy Friday. And uh, what is the, uh, we're 57 minutes in. Um, I don't know which one, uh, you know, you would have, <laughs> you have to show me on the miniature where it looks like a skull. Actually, there's no globs of paint here. Uh, as you can see, no globs of paint. But uh, um, I wonder if it's maybe is it the, the is it their fires in the background or something like that that might uh, look a wee bit uh, fire light or a wee bit skull like. Okay, I'm gonna try and get a little bit of the landscape involved here. No, no, no. I need. I do kind of like this brush here, so I'm just going to clean it the old fashioned way. Hey, Whisker King, nice to see you again. Uh, wait a minute. Wait, that just moved. Where am I looking there? That. Uh, so, oh, yeah. Uh, thanks, Dairy Field. Sorry, next to the brushes on the table. Oh. Uh, this is from Reaper Miniatures right here because Reaper Miniature jars of paint clog 100% of the time. That's to unclog them. Yeah, and uh, just like Pendrake, it's the pokey tool. You do the hokey pokey and your bottle is unclogged. That's what it's all about. See, that's a. Uh, I could definitely have been a songwriter. I mean, I did that right there. That's like music gold. Someone just gonna have to write a little bit of a tune to that. Hey, Tukule, nice to see ya. Hope that you're having yourself a well now, a good Friday morning. And obviously, for some other folks, it is well into Friday morning. Not just uh, not just for me. Oh, if they do the hokey pokey and the paint comes rushing out, well, that's uh, that has certainly happened after using the pokey tool. Now, my typical pokey tools, I've just kind of lost a bunch of those. I usually find them when I try, well, vacuum. Oh, here's the, uh, this is the other pokey tool right here that we sometimes use. Uh, so these uh. We're just using the movie images uh, for right now. This, it's kind of a conglomeration of the two. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Let's get some of our daylight down here. And this is a really different sky from some of the recent ones that we've been doing, right? Look at that. <laughs> that is quite the difference in the sky. However, it's not all that different. We took... Brilliant yellow, pale, and indigo, whereas this is brilliant yellow, pale, and Prussian blue. So yeah, look at look at the difference there. Uh, let's see. Uh, so uh, yeah, well, Shaza, you you know all about the bombing of Fort Wapo, right? You've heard that story several times. You don't need me to tell you that story. 
That is why there's no red paint allowed in Fort Wapple. After the bombing of Fort Wapple with the red paint, not just once, not just twice, but three times. Which is just insane. All right, now we we know there's these crazy shield things that run along most of the side of the ship, even back here towards the stern. And I don't know if it's, it's sort of like a little bit of crenellations or whatever, and that's the idea behind them. Hey, Joy of Painting Minis, how the heck are you doing? Uh, so Whisker King, uh, a lot of the paintings that I already have, they are, they're either presents or whatever. But I will be, since they are so really, really popular, apparently, I will, and I, it would be fun to do some more exercises of these. So... You know, if there's one that somebody really, really wants, I can always uh, paint another one. Because it would it would be a, a nice way to just kind of keep reinforcing. Uh, maybe I could just do a regular video on the next one. So, yeah, do our, our Twitch session here. But then if I paint another Edoras or something like that, we can maybe just film a video out of that. That could be very fun. So uh, let's see, today I printed the second miniature and I'm in love with it and I just want a hundred of them. That's a pangolin merchant with a hat. Uh, well, that's uh, I'm glad, Neri Field, that that's been working out for you. Uh, I hopefully, may, not, not this week, obviously. This week is too far gone. But maybe next week I might be able to finally get the printer going again. Well, the new printer. The, the old one. I'm just going to give up on that for right now. I'm not even going to bother looking to see if it's the screen because we know it's the screen. Because color screens are just pretty much designed to fail, right? All right, I'm going to go back now. To some of my smoke here. I might even... Oh, do we want to darken that flame down a little bit? I don't know. A little bit of Van Dyke Brown. A little bit of the black spinel here. And then we'll just do some of our dry brush slash stippling here. Also, that scumbling action. Uh, let's see. Got a Print Kathy a cap and send it to, oh, a Captain America. Okay. Uh, well, Shaza, unfortunately, there's only so many hours in the day. I would have printed it already, but, well, as you know, the printer is dead, unusable, and all of my files went with it. So even if I had made, uh, even if I had made some of those uh, files, they would all be worthless because they would all be saved as the six-letter extension instead of CTB. So uh, unfortunately, I can't do anything about printers breaking, right? Uh, well, you uh, obviously the screens can all break, but. The the we're talking about a new Sonic Mini 4K versus an Elegoo Mars that <laughs> it's probably not even worth as much as a new screen. It would it would probably its value is probably lower than a new screen is because you can get I think it's the Elego Mars Pro 2 or something like that for I think a couple hundred bucks, which means the printer that I have, which is older and nastier than that. Oh my gosh, it's just, it's basically, it's kind of funny because a few years ago it would have been very high tech. Now it's just, uh, 
it's like a pager in comparison to the new printers, wouldn't you say? Let me see if I can darken down some of my coastline back here. And by darken down, I'm going to take a little bit of the Prussian blue here. Yes, that's more like it. There we go. I think we need to darken that horizon a little bit too. And then our fire is going to stand out a little more. So it's a horizon line, which of course, below the halfway point here. Now, if you has the, the Mars 2 Pro. So this one is basically, <laughs> this, this is the ancient, I think it actually says the ancient junky Mars printer on it. I think that's actually the name that's uh, on the side of it. I could be wrong, but I think that's uh, technically written on the side because everybody has to know. Uh, yeah, Whisker King, it, it, uh, I, I don't know. Well, it, I know it's been a little while since you've been here, but yeah, all of my build plate things, they're all saved as that six letter extension. So every single build plate that I have been making, including the dozens and dozens of build plates I just made in the last couple of weeks, those are all useless now. Uh, let's see. Now, Shaza, do you have any large format ones there? Because I would imagine that the Saturn is the Saturn. Saturn's got to be a 4K, right? Or am I thinking of that wrong? I certainly probably am. Okay, I'm going to see if I can maybe get some of my fire reflected in the water possibly here. First, kill some of those edges. Uh, so the, the Saturn's a 2K. This is the first 4K in the line. Now, have they already... Oh, gosh, I don't even... Uh, have they gone into the whole, okay, you can only use Chidu Box now? Or is that for the next gen, the, the 8K ones? See if I can't brighten that up just a little bit. And maybe even have a bit of the fire reflected there. Uh, let's see, so Frozen is shipping out the 8K. The 8K went out for December. Uh, the 4K, I think, is bound to Cheetah Box. Okay. Yeah, Whisker King, that was really, oof, that was most unfortunate because I basically took a whole bunch of the July releases that I was making build plate after build plate after build plate. I had all kinds of stuff ready to go. And then all of a sudden, poof, there went the printer. And that's when, that's when we learned that, oh, yeah, Okay, we can't use those files anymore. Yay, that's outstanding. Uh, let's see, and uh, abuses on the Mars 3, you got to use CTB. Ah, and the, but the Saturn has a 4K screen. Now, of course, the other thing we were hoping to do was to get a battery backup before we started messing around with the Sonic Mini 4K, right? And sadly, we're not going to have a chance to do that. Because we just need to have that thing working. All right, how's about a little bit of the perline black, maybe, and some of the Van Dyke brown together. And let's see if we can start to maybe get some crew on our ship here also again try and get some resolution on the ship here on the hull and such i i, I kind of hope that printers don't just change so fast that that, <laughs> that i won't be able to keep up 
Because technology there seems to be changing real fast. Yeah, it, it, it is interesting. All the folks that, uh, you know, they were big fans of the lychee, lychee, whatever it is. But now they may have to use Chidu Box or nothing. And that, uh, well, no matter what, the, the first thing I'm going to do with that Sonic Mini 4K is make a copy of the USB. That will be the first order of business because, thank goodness, it was what I did with the, the old Elego because, well, that thing died. All right, get back to our S Fultum here. Let's get some nice darks along our water line here. What the heck, maybe even on this ship back here. Uh, Whisker King, they're all kept in multiple hard drives, so they're not lost. It's They are backed up in at least four different places. It's unfortunately, no one told me to save them as a project. So what I would do is I would, I would slice them and save them and thinking, that, okay, that's all I need to do because I was not aware of different formats. But the, all the files themselves, they're saved in multiple places. They're just useless. So unfortunately, yep, that's, uh, well, again, I wasn't going to lose the files. The files are gone because they are the six-letter format as opposed to the three-letter format, the CTB. <clears throat> because that's what the older printer used. And now we have to work with the newer printer, which uh, sadly does not work with that format. Yeah, we've got, uh, I do believe we're up to at least 24 terabytes now of backup storage for all the video stuff, all of our images. And believe it or not, it's time to get another at least four to six, uh, six terabyte drive. We're sadly, we're just about due for another one of those. Uh, unfortunately, Landress, uh, no, once the once they are sliced and saved, they're just dead. Can't do anything with them. Because I've actually tried to bring up those files. Yeah, once they're sliced and saved, they're dead. You have to save them, unfortunately, as a project. Otherwise, they're toast. You can't do anything with them. I couldn't figure out why when I would try and bring in the, you know, my... Uh, Chidu box files, I'd, I'd go to load them up to see if I could add something to them. I'm like, what the heck is going on with this? Well, it ex certainly explains a lot. Uh, it's called 3D Builder. It's got a feature called Fish Fix Mesh. It's recommended to drop your files into 3D Builder before Chidu box. Oh, do I want to darken this down? I'm going to maybe... Uh, Grab one of these brushes here. Let's grab a little bit of our indigo. And do a couple of darker bits here where our ship is. It also starts to break up the water sea into smaller and smaller waves. And how far do we want to go with this? Again, all of this, what does that do? It helps to flatten out this water here. I need to lighten this just a bit so that we can throw some more of our waves here. But these are a little bit thicker, right? a little bit wider. Do the same over here now. Again, just looking to make make waves. This has some thinner on it, so it's even activating some of the stuff that's already here. 
it was really weird. Yeah, Landress, uh, when I would bring up the files again, you know, like, okay, the sliced ones, it would come back or come up and it would be all grayed out. And that was just, I couldn't do anything with it. And that would explain a lot. I just couldn't, I was like, what the heck? Is this file messed up? What's going on with this? But apparently that's just, yeah, that's kind of the thing that happens once you've sliced them and saved them instead of uh, saving them as a project. Well, now we know, right? We will not be saving things unless they're saved as a project first from now on so that we don't have to deal with sad things like that anymore. Because that did not make me very happy, I have to say. Yeah, we need a little bit more of a wake behind this ship here. Okay, now it looks like it's cutting through the water. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, that's about the right level of light and dark. We do need a little bit of our thinner on those, though, to make that sure that actually moves. Uh, Bithron, they are saved on multiple drives, just like I was saying. That's why I was talking about all those terabytes of backup drives. The August releases are already saved on three, no, four different disks right now. So you would literally have to have four different disks, basically two computers and two backup drives fail before I would lose all of those files. It's not the files, like the STL files that we're talking about. We're talking about the Chidu box files. So the things that you use to print because the raw files themselves is uh, basically it's like having paint. This is the STL file that I'm printing with. So this is the raw paint that goes into making this. This we have saved in many places. But this, once I basically I have this one copy of it. And unless you save it as a project, that's all you have is that one copy and it cannot be altered. So again, it is not the STL files that are gone. We have those in plenty of places. I even have the the Chidu box files in multiple places. Sad thing is, they're, they're worthless files. <laughs> they ain't going to do nothing. Uh, they are no good. Well, they're good for the Elegu Mars, the old one anyway. But they're not going to do me a whole lot of good on the Sonic Mini 4K. All right, just to get a look into, have really thin waves back there. I don't know. There's, a, there's still a part of me that wants to try and get the FDM printer going, but I'm sure there's just, well, there's a whole bunch of pitfalls there too, right? Oh, actually, Shaza, uh, oh, I wanted to ask you something about the larger scale things there. Um, I think you told me how many pieces you did the uh, your Captain America, you printed that out in, right? Uh, let's see, I lost all the cross promos from a drive, front dive from April. Uh, Landrest uses the... Uh, Ye old cloud right there. So because we have, well, like I said, well over 20 terabytes worth of videos and stuff like that that need to be saved and backed up from the last eight years of making videos, we got lots and lots of, uh, I'm very used to making multiple copies of things. Now... What are we doing here? Well, we got this big old dark shape here. That's going to start being reflected in the water. That's going to pull this water forward. Remember when we just put this initial dark here, the difference it made? Look at the difference this is going to make here now. Uh, but for me, since so often we are uploading stuff or either Kathy and I are streaming or whatever, I need to just have them on physical drives instead of uh, dragging them off the internet because, oh my gosh, it's a, 
it is in constant state of usage. All right, so see, we got a larger wave right here. Again, that bigger waves pull it forward, pushes all this stuff to the background. Hey, Zach, how the heck are you doing? Here, we're going to darken this, our background here just a little bit, maybe even around where the flames are here. Then we got to figure out what is going on with this sail right here. It's going to be lighter, going to be darker. It is warmer right now. We have that. Oh yeah, Landris, uh, th thanks for showing me that building that you printed the other day. Uh, how many hours was that print? I think you told me. Uh, so yeah, just like Narifield was saying, once uh, once you once you put it in that one format, yeah, you can't unfortunately change it to another one. Uh, just a hard lesson learned. Uh, so 28 hours all total. There we go. Uh, now, Bithron, how much more of the of the 15 mil stuff? You think it'll just, uh, I mean, it's kind of a nice little change working on the 15 mil stuff. I guess the next question is, I have made a few, well, just a tiny bit of terrain for uh, Flames of War stuff, but I think that's more of a 10 mil, right, Flames of War? I wasn't sure if you had done, uh, I think I might have already asked you, though, if you had done any kind of 15 mil terrain at all. Ah, uh, Zach just bought a whole bunch of STLs. Now, Zach, was it uh, a was it a Patreon that you did, or was it uh, from my mini factory, or any of those guys? Ah, uh, so you got two hundred and fifty four <laughs> to put those wings on. Well, Bitron, I don't what well, Bitron. I just. Uh, Actually, I'm just kind of glad that you had a chance to to just get to some of your hobby stuff. I know that it's maybe not necessarily the ideal circumstance or whatever, but glad that you were able to at least get back to the hobby thing a little bit. Uh-huh. That, uh, well, it's, uh, again, more of that linguistic gold, right? Also, too, you know, there's a sharp edge with this, uh, with these sails, too. And also sharper edges here on our water, everything back there, softer, smoother, right? Ah, uh, but if Pithron gets bored of all that 15 mil stuff, it's back to terrain. Uh, Pithron, I would, ooh, I'm really... Just kind of bummed I haven't been able to keep going on the terrain. Uh, one thing I will do, though, is try to uh, paint, actually, those Rohan pieces. I have been, technically, I have been actually making some terrain because I've been casting pieces of the... Uh, do I actually have those things up here somewhere? No, I guess they're still not up here. But I have technically been casting a whole bunch of pieces of that Green stuff world. Oh, for making another one of these here. Let me see if I can find that. It's that uh, stoneworks. Here it is. So I've, I've got actually way more pieces than I thought of this stuff. So I think I might be able to film a video on that. Uh, making a much larger structure. Something a little more interesting. Uh, so Zach just got some, oh, uh, some statues. Ah, oh, Zach, the... Those are really nifty. Now, I know, I think it's Loot Studios. They do some stat. Yeah, I think it's Loot Studios. They have some statues. Oh, man, Landrist, have you, has anybody seen 
the nifty <clears throat> the nifty new loot studios uh basically terrain slash basing pieces because those are pretty darn nifty i have to say Ah, you like Landress, uh, Landress just, <laughs> oh, Landress drops a good one. Landress just, uh, he said, I'll see your linguistic gold and give you linguistic latinum. So Land Landress does the uh, scores big time there. That's a, that's a good one, Landress. Yeah, Landris to me, uh, well, the big thing for them is all the 75 mil stuff, right? Which is really amazing. And the busts, too. But boy, those basing bits, man, those things are talking about worth their weight in gold. They really are. Uh, yeah, so uh, let's see. Where's some of the, well, some of their terrain bits. Uh, we'll see what they have that can be used maybe for our uh, rune here. But also, printing goes ever on. Guess what? They have a whole bunch of stuff that's going to go in our blacksmith shop. Now, well, I guess some of it could go in the windmill as well. But he also has things for that I can put in the archer range and especially the stable, right? Now, of course, the great hall, that's mostly populated by all the loot studio stuff. And of course, well, you know, there's our one of our buildings painted there, and of course, there's our Dunlendings and Wolves of Isengard setting all that stuff on fire. But especially for for those of us that love Lord of the Rings, and well, even if GW has the, or makes the figures and you have money to buy them, they usually do not have them in stock, sadly. So. We have definitely been relying on Diwali, the printing goes ever on, those guys to furnish us with Lord of the Rings figures, which are fabulous, of course. Uh, let's see, have you considered doing castings? Uh, Whisker King, it would just take more time. It's uh, the other nice thing is that I can just uh, make 10 or 12 of the right size and then just have it print instead of me having to physically go and cast all that stuff. And when you print those things, there's no mold lines, there's no, there's not even any support dots because they basically print flat. And if there are some support dots, it's just really easy to get rid of them. Uh, let me see. So Steelhead, actually Steelhead, uh, they're going to be doing a War in the North book because, well, they've they've done the new Easterling uh, Death Cult. No, sorry. Dragon Cult Assassins. And they've also done a, a, some new stuff for, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Dale. And, of course, they have Old Dane and a couple of other dwarves. So War in the North is certainly going to be the next book. Let me just see if I can't raise this up a little bit further. Yeah, maybe this one too. And I might, for funsies here, have a little bit of that flamey stuff, maybe coming through the sail there. Uh, of course, oh, I, oh, gee whiz, I completely forgot. Has anybody seen, speaking of Lord of the Rings and, well, movie, TV, whatever, have people seen that first image that Amazon posted that has the two trees in it? So, yeah, I, I don't know. It was a couple of days ago that broke. There's already been a bazillion of the... Uh, YouTube lore video guys doing stuff on that. Uh, yep, PNP project, that's going to be on Amazon. And that's going to, they also gave a start date, 
that's going to start in September of 2022. So, yeah, the new Amazon series, uh, it's going to be, well, most people said it was going to be Second Age and focus on Numenor. Uh, it's basically uh, more like a Silmarillion type of a thing. Uh, so Steelhead, a lot of the lore guys. Now, I have been massively skeptical of it, like really skeptical, just convinced it's going to be a disaster. But the guys that do all those different lore videos, some of the the new things that they've heard, and apparently they've actually, uh, to throw people off the scent, they've had kind of like, I forget what the operation was, but where the Allies basically made... Rommel and the boys figure they were going to be landing at Calais with uh, Patton and the mysterious army that didn't actually exist. Well, except in the the inflatable tanks and inflatable jeeps and such. But they've actually established fake filming scenes or fake filming sets just to and kind of fed that so that people would go to the fake areas. Uh, let's see, I know the art team has been building sets and props for a couple of years now. Uh, let me see. So also, too, I don't know if people have heard there's going to be, and it is anime. It's not animated. It is anime, but it's called War of the Rohirrim, and it's supposed to feature Helm Hammer Hand. And again, that's going to be an anime thing, uh, a, a movie, again, called uh, War of the Rohirrim. But they showed the, the two trees. Now, of course, it could still be a total disaster. And I wouldn't even be surprised if it was. But I don't know. I feel a little bit better about it. Uh, land dressed. You know what I want? Uh, you know those, uh, those the blow-up uh, Christmas decorations. That, like everybody puts now, every holiday has basically, I saw even 4th of July, you know, the inflatable Christmas decorations. Landris, where can we get inflatable tanks? I want to put those on the yard year-round. Not just, to, they're not just for Christmas time, right? Okay, let's. I'm mm, gonna get a couple of the. Uh, yeah, let's get a couple of the sales sections in here too. Oh, uh, Bithron, why don't you throw in some of your links to your uh, to your Lord of the Rings terrain there, if you're if you're still awake here with us. I'm gonna get a couple of darks here in the smoke. Here it is. I was wondering where my little uh, stippling brush is here. Uh, let me see. Oh, actually, oh, uh, Whisker King, speaking of audiobooks, well, a couple of things. I do believe that Shattered Sword, oh, I got to go look for that. I think Shattered Sword is out in audiobook form now, but uh, I guess Sip. I think it's September of this year, so next month, the audiobook for Lord of the Rings with, uh, what's his name? Uh, Andy Serkis or whatever, with him doing the uh, narration. I do believe that that is going to be available next month. Yeah, Bithron, uh, that stonework stuff, it's still not going to be, I think, as well, it's going to be kind of a hybrid it's going to be a combination of the stonework stuff, and then I'm going to be doing foam things, like the roof and everything. I'm just doing that with foam and everything else. I'm not doing the roof, their roof. It's just because uh, I don't know if you've seen some of the other people's castings of that. You just can't cast those stupid roof pieces. They are just pretty much uncastable, so I'm not even going to bother. Let's darken this up a bit. Yeah, so it's, it was definitely looking really, really, really bleak for that. People are a little bit uh, 
more positive about it. They're they're still kind of holding their breath because they could still likely all go up in smoke. Ah, see what I did there? And of course it could start well and then go horribly. That's uh that has also happened to shows, right? They sort of got off to their decent start and then everything went haywire. Just kind of hoping that uh, that the token estate, you know, if if anything goes awry, the token estate is going to show up with helicopters in the form of eagles. <laughs> the eagles will just land at, at the Amazon thing and just start tearing things apart because, you know, eagles... So, yeah, those uh, those superhero things, all they got are just superheroes, man. Uh, Lord of the Rings has eagles and has Army of the Dead. So I think you don't want those guys coming after you for screwing up their uh, their legacy, right? You don't want to have Army of the Dead coming after you. I want to see if I can grab me a little bit of, again of my lighter color here. And just make some smaller interruptions in these clouds. Also, give something, uh, tighten up the contrast on these things too, maybe. Get ourselves a blending brush if we can find one. There. Now, of course, uh, I don't uh, get a chance to watch too many TV shows. I have well, one's the the last movie that I saw was Midway. Yeah, that's the last movie that I saw, and so I don't really see any movies. Yeah, Whisker King, and I was I was really worried about uh, Midway. I was I was terrified. Then, oh my gosh, what is going? What are they going to do here? And I was I was sort of pleasantly surprised, actually. And uh, well, that's but you see that what's uh, the beauty about all of it is that's what Twitch is for. Because you actually get to, uh, you actually get to be in the, like well, you get to put yourself in the movie, right? Instead of just like, oh yeah, you know, I bet you this is what they're going to do. Or, well, they signed this person for three years. They're not going to kill him in season one. Or if they kill him in season one, they're going to keep coming back over and over again. Like Night's Watch during a Song of Ice and Fire game. So it kind of uh, kills the mystery a little bit, doesn't it? Get doing my little scumbly brush stroke right there, soften up some edges. I have to say, the last time I've ever seen anything involving He-Man, I was, well, <laughs> probably back in the 70s or something like that, when you would see uh, commercials during cartoons or whatever for He-Man toys. Yeah, Bithron, uh, and that's uh, a lot of it is all... Yeah, Bithron. Oh, that's right. We never had a chance to actually talk since uh, since we saw that video by Lockie. Yeah, Bithron. I could swear that he said he was going to take that stuff and he was going to make it instead of the weird modular boards that he tried to make. He said like it was a good idea, but it just didn't work. I could swear that he said he was going to put those on like better modular boards. 
Ah, uh, look at this. We have Arathu. Arathu, how the heck are you doing? Oh, gosh. What is it? It's almost 1 o'clock here. So what is it, 8 o'clock there in the morning? Uh, it's time for Grim to hit the sack. Well, Grim, uh, thanks again for doing the uh, the Discord stuff. That it was, well, certainly saved me a whole bunch of very valuable time. So it is appreciated. And it definitely made a difference, uh, Grim. So it made a, uh, an immediate impact. So thank you so much. That is appreciated. Ah, there we go. Now I'm getting some lighter tones, and that's what I wanted to see here. And I think now my sale, because I got the soft stuff, sharp versus, oh, wait a minute. Here's something we ain't done yet. I know the colors are kind of on the grayer side, but, oh, look at that. Interesting. There is no warm. There's no cooler colors, right? The sky's not warm. Water's not cooler. Here, let's bring this back again. Ah, very interesting. Ah, so yeah, Bithron, uh, so I wasn't just losing my mind then? Okay. Uh, I could have sworn that's what he said he was going to do. And let's say Whisker King, uh, if you like a good story, recommend Blackfeet, Joshua, uh, Delzo. So, so again, sorry that I, I I can't really see the chat. I'm almost, I think, about ready to maybe ditch the reference a little bit more so that I can actually maybe have the chat up there too. Uh, well, actually, Arathu, technically, there's happy little trees. There's happy little trees right here. There's happy little trees right there. And there's happy little trees right there. Uh, they, they're they kind of dead, but they're, they're, they can still be happy. Even though they're dead, they can be happy. At least here in this universe, even the dead trees are happy because uh, they make fun little boats. Oh, speaking of fun little boats and war in Middle Earth and such, uh, actually, as I was doing the research for these, I found a whole bunch of, you know, Gondor, Gondor ships and uh, elf ships. We, I think now maybe there, there might be some areas I can look around to see what people have done for kind of a Lord of the Rings sea combat game. I mean, it, uh, just because the tree is dead doesn't mean it can't be happy. It it lives on in these Corsair ships. Now I want. Oh, that's the other thing I want to do. I want to see if I cannot bring in some juicy light colors right along here. And the idea is to kind of have this sun right down in here. Well, Steelhead, if the if the happy little trees are on fire, they must be happy because, well, they're warm, right? How are how else are trees supposed to stay warm unless you set them on fire? Man, those trees will get all cold. Uh, but PNP insists that they might just be happy because they don't have to live in a world with orcs in it. Here, let's see if we can't. So what we're trying to do again is pop some of that sky cohort down into our waves right over here. Ah, but Arathu, they're just they're they're gonna be happy, uh, happy warriors. Yes, you can be a happy warrior too. Uh, especially when you're, I don't know, about 20 feet tall or 30 feet tall or something like that. You got really long arms. And you can pretty much step on anything you want. So that makes that makes you a happy warrior. And now we're going to pop some of these lake cores on the tops, the crests of some of these waves right here. Ah, there we go. So see, now it's a... Kind of take advantage of that little sun that's sort of peeking through our clouds there. Look at this. We got Snowyak. Snowyak, how you doing? Uh, I, I do believe I saw your latest uh, Instagram post there. And as always, looking really good. I hope that the painting just in general has been going well. 
Ah, that see, now those are starting to come forward. Let's see if we can do something on these guys here too. Just a little more right here. Yeah, and what that does brings this forward, sets all that stuff back, further back. Yes, I did see the ogre. I thought so. But Snowyak, it looks like that you've really been doing some fun miniature painting thing. It's a, uh, it's great to see you having a blast with that. All right, you know what? I think I'm going to see if I can't get some of that right in behind here. Then that ship comes forward too. Yeah, now Snow, are you still able to get your uh your usual bike rides in and some of your your hiking excursions too? Oh, let's see. Uh, after work, uh, mostly too tired. Ah, okay, too little. Yeah, I can understand that. A little bit too exhausted to be doing that after work. All right, what about... Do I need to get a little bit more of my reds? I'm going to try and see if I can't get some orange in the flames here. So how's about our Indian yellow which of course as we know is made from cow uh, cows that are fed mangoes and then uh, a certain liquid that is maybe left behind a few hours later that is uh, that's what you use to make the the pigment for indian yellow so if you get powdered indian yellow pigment you could just eat mangoes yourself and i don't know maybe use a uh, a, a dehumidifier, one of those things, or whatever it is that dehumidifies fruit. There, and maybe a couple of more. Find that spread this way a little bit more. Yeah, so a rathu could be a source of uh, Indian yellow pigment in Norway then. That would be fantastic. Yeah, I think that should happen. Because it's, uh, yeah, more Indian yellow uh, pigment, the better. So I'm going to try and get some of the, I know what the shapes of these things are like. Just from, again, seeing the miniature, well, the 28 millimeter scale version of this that I'm going to have to make. It, they're sort of a combination of like shields and then some of those metal bits you see on stuff like the black gate and everything. Uh, let's see, Snowy I picked up on riding the race goers again two hours each week, so no time for pictures. Uh, but you did get a, a walk with the daughter and it's a nice quality time. Walking around a nice little hamlet, which makes me hungry. Because Hamlet makes me think of ham. Uh, <laughs> so, race bike, not race goers. I I was thinking that. Hmm, I wonder if that's race bike. Hello, little hobbit. Spark my ganja. And hello, little uh, new little hobbit. It's Miss Dorsax or Miss Miss Sodax. Hello, little hobbit. Oh. Spark my ganja. It's the Corsairs. Hmm. I think I got. I think I got just the solution for this. Wait a minute. Who are we gonna see? Who are we gonna see? It's like, oh, seriously? Not running across the water. Yeah. You think we can just go across the water, right? Uh, I'm not doing that. Uh, it's the performance enhancing drugs. Spark my gun. <laughs> Thank you so much, PNC project or PNP project. He's like, well, I'm gonna get all wet, man. Come on, the spray alone. Look at look at this. Look at I'm sporting here. There's enough holes in there already. You think I'm gonna get that wet and have mold all over the place plus the darn holes? Say no, baby. Well, I guess uh, I guess that whole uh calling up the dead of Dunhero. That's not going to work out so well for Aragorn, is it? 
Hey, Gin Fritter, nice to see you. Uh, actually, you know, Gin Fritter, I was actually thinking of making an omelet today. All kidding aside, I think I have to get some more eggs, though, because I think Kathy's been making a lot of hard-boiled eggs lately. But, yeah, I know I made a couple of omelets, uh, well, it was a couple of weeks ago. So, yeah, I might have to, I don't know, might have to make one tomorrow. That would be a capital idea. Yes. What is that? Oh, yeah, does, you know, there's no broken eggs. There's just omelets. Yes. Or is it, what is it? you got to break a few eggs to make an omelet, omelet right? Maybe we'll just have to break some eggs tomorrow and make some omelet. Might just have to do that. All right, I wanted to show a little bit of shape on that mountain back there. Let's use something here as a blending brush. Soften that a little bit. There we go. I angry ham boiled the eggs for six minutes and forty seconds. Really good boiled eggs. Well, Kathy's been uh, she's been doing lots of hard boiled eggs. That's for sure. Uh, making those a snack. Oh, that's what I could have had in my salad today. Could have had some hard boiled eggs in there. Uh, so Rathu, I think uh, tomorrow what we would have to well, I would have to maybe get some cheese as well. But I think we would actually uh, fry up some bacon and, and chop that up and throw that in the omelet, too, to have a bacon omelet. We might even have to throw some cheese in there. We might also have to throw in some ground beef there. It would be the meat lover's omelet for sure. Ah, see what that does? Kind of sets that even further back because now there's a little bit of some kind of shape on that mountain back there or hill or whatever the heck that is. Yeah, I, uh, Kathy's had a couple of very successful baking session or uh, uh, boiling sessions on her. Uh, yeah, baking eggs would be a little bit different. That would be a much different uh, prospect right there. Where's that other? Let's use this thing here. Some of this Van Dyke brown. Sharpen up the edges of some of these sails, but I might also darken down some stuff here. Well, no, act just like we did here with a little flame peeking through. Why don't we do that over here? Let's have a little bit of that flame peeking through. That is not in the original image, but I think that's more fun to do that. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. It, it really makes the sails look like they're actually in front of something here. Hey, Trash, you just missed it, Trash. Oh, yeah, Peppermint Patty teaching. Uh, oh, you know what, uh, Gin Fritter? I was looking, and, the, and I know because I've gone to that same local grocery store for 40-some-odd years, they did not have any Easter egg coloring stuff. Yeah, we might have to have an Easter egg coloring stream, just like uh, we had our, our cookie decorating stream, because we always had the one true egg, uh, one egg to bind them, one egg to rule them, or whatever. Uh, and we even, had, we even had a crown. We had the Witch King's crown for one of the eggs. Yeah, we'll have to maybe do that next year, too. Uh, so, Trash, you missed it. The Army of the Dead is refusing to go after it. Yeah, the horses, they refuse to go over the water. They don't want to get wet. So, yeah, the Army of the Dead is useless. Uh, but it's 2 a.m. for Calvaria, and Calvaria has to head off to bed. Well, thanks, Calvaria. I appreciate you joining us here. As always, and you have a good night's sleep. All right, now I feel like that flame is actually going up into the smoke there. Yeah, like that. There you go, Snowman. Uh, one egg in the darkness to bind them. Yes, that's what we need. Bring some more. So, Trash, I hope that everything's going okay. Maybe 
bit more of the fire here. I'll just enhance this a bit more. More flamey stuff. Ah, yeah, this is kind of a fun and different thing here. Maybe uh, more flame through the sails. Ah, I like that. It's kind of fun. Uh, so, Trash, somebody was posting, the, they had posted a picture of their... Uh, what's the big old pirate ship called again? But somebody had some pictures posted on uh, Instagram and that it wasn't quite HMS Victory, but it had, you know, your... Uh, they did go ahead and paint the gunnels black. I think where it would have been normally yellow, they did uh, sort of a reddish type color. Ah, uh, well, here we go. Poof, there you go. Yeah, there's a little film noir for you. So what is it? Is a, it is three decks, right? So it is, it's basically, well, whereas HMS Victory was a three, uh, it's more like a, a USS Constitution. It's just one gun deck, but it's uh, pretty much more like that like your standard sort of ship of the line type of a deal. Uh, let's see, Sultra Ed Mix before you start cooking. Uh, it's funny, Arathu, I actually add, and it drives Kathy nuts because I add salt and sometimes things like thyme and pepper to the eggs before they actually are added, or you know, before they start uh, getting cooked. So Arathu, yes. Now, I didn't know that it breaks it down like that. I just know that I, it kind of seems to uh, insert a little bit more flavor when I do that. But it's nice to know. Maybe uh, Arathu, that's why the eggs break down a little bit more. Uh, let's see. So instead it becomes something new, like a thread woven into a tapestry. So my eggs became something new. <laughs> a deuce. I thought you said tobacco because again the the boom is in the way. I thought you wrote tobacco in the eggs. I'm I was looking at that. I said, well, the Surgeon General doesn't approve of that recipe. Uh, you put oh bay leaves in that. Wow, that's a boy. You know, imperfect idea. I haven't used bay leaves in forever. I'm trying to think of the and I remember I used to use those. Uh, you know, maybe doing some uh, cooking up meatballs and stuff like that, just to kind of have the bay leaves in there for that extra little punch of flavor. Yeah, so Calvadia, it's a uh, yeah, I, I forget what it's called again, but it's uh, it's a pretty nifty thing. It's got three decks that all are kind of removable and. It's got gun ports and what does it come with uh, trash? About 18 cannons or something like that. I think it, it has at least 18 of those. Okay, so what I'm also doing here, yeah, that's, there we go. So our fires look a little bit more juicy now. Maybe they'll even reflect a little bit more here in our water. Oh, and people can buy extra cannons too. So uh, they, they can, I guess, put them up on the, the main deck as well. Because I, I don't know if there are there cannons that also are for the main deck or are they all for the gun deck? Uh, so there's 20 cannons and 30 ports. Uh, actually, what is it? Uh, one of my favorite audio books of all time. Well, it was the, the book was good too, but it was uh, The Art of War, and it was kind of a dramatization of Alexander from the time he was, uh, what, 8, 16, I think, right up until the time that he died. That was one of my favorite. Kathy knows that. I must have played the audiobook hundreds of times. 
But yeah, I like the idea of the extra cannons. That would be really cool. All right, we've lightened up our sky here a little bit, maybe a touch more. Right here. And then that can uh, I can boost this up a bit, maybe even have. I don't know. Let, let's see what happens when we do this. Because I like that to separate from the background a little bit. Yeah, something like this. Yep. Uh, yeah, like the sun is reflecting on those just a touch. Might even, yeah. Another little line there, but also it uh, brings out that sail a little bit. But also now it okay, pushes that background further and further and further back. The sharper these lines are, all the soft stuff back here, it just gets pushed back more and more and more. All right, we need some lights on the tops of these waves here. I'm also going to have some of my thinner mixed into that and get light touch on the brush, right? You got a death grip like this. We're not doing any kind of light touch there. So no death grip. And just, a, nah, I'm going to light, uh, get a little bit of my indigo in it. Not, maybe not that much. Maybe not quite that much. And I think that's just about right. Yeah. So now it looks like the wave is kind of, you know, casting a shadow. It's uh, overturning just a smidge. We don't want to do too much because then it's going to detract from everything else. But yeah, trash the, I think it, it was the first one that I'd seen anybody put any kind of paint on. Uh, definitely would want to, if I do that one, it's got to be in your HMS Victory color scheme. It's either that or I, I sculpt a whole bunch of extra uh, stuff, especially along the stern of the ship to make it almost more like Royal Sovereign, or no, Sovereign, Royal Sovereign, that was the one, yeah. Uh, I think I'm going to go back to my one second here. Just my reference. I want to see. Yeah, this needs to be. We need to have something cutting through this. Okay, now now that ship is actually sitting down in the water instead of just kind of pasted on there like a postcard. And I might have to also lighten some of these. It's a big old flat area of dark. We don't want that. More of our light right here. And I'm also going to snap a picture here because we've kind of changed our fire around and such, done some different things. Okay. Back to it. And I'm going to get a couple more highlights right along the waves here, too. And you can see there's some difference in the thickness of them. Because again, trying to make this like the wave is just sort of falling over instead of just a bunch of lines. We've done it here. Another little bit in the corner there. So the idea again is that the waves look like they're kind of turning over this way. Uh, the retellings. Uh... Oh, hey, Rathu. Let's get uh, let's get to a little bit of Book of Wapple stuff. And these are pretty darn important here. These are fairly important. So 
Well, how do we keep dry paint, wet paint? The dry paint was we literally dry brushed a bunch of stuff onto the board because it's absorbent. And now we're starting to do the wetter paint. This has more thinner in it, like the stuff we're doing on the waves. So it flows better, but it also sticks as well. And there was a couple of times, like the fire, it wasn't showing up at all until we put that darker stuff around it. So if you want to have light, you must have dark. And of course, contrast is more than just light versus dark. That's why we do things like our film noir and color temperature and that intensity. Well, that's really, really, really important. This is the warmest color on the whole thing. This is the most intense color on the whole thing. Who enters my domain? Well, we were just about to go into a, a film noir, but look who just brought in some color. It's Art Plushy. Plushy, how the heck are you doing? If everyone could please give Plushy a follow, that would be sensational. And of course, uh, we, we're all desperate to know what, what is Charlie up to? What does Charlie think? So our play, I hope that you're not uh, stuck behind an owl or something like that because we, we need some wisdom from Charlie. Of course we do. As we had a couple more of our lights right here. Uh, and uh, Plushy, have you started painting some of the, what is that, Dominion? Have you started painting that stuff already? I know last time we were talking, you had a commission for doing that. Oh, Lake Art Plushy. What does Charlie say? He says, forgive. <laughs> so Charlie says that all the folks that are having all their buildings burned, they have to forgive the uh, the Corsairs of Umbar right there. Uh all right, Jen Fritter, you have a good one. And uh, nice to see you, as always. Hopefully you've been good. Uh, let's see, I'm ask how you made the fireplace on the base you showed 10 minutes ago. Oh, I think you're talking about this one here. Now, we have a whole bunch of uh, basing sessions. And also, uh, that's just something called heavy gloss gel. And let me let me take you here to that. It's actually the same stuff that you see on the roof there. And it's the same stuff that made the flames. And where's our done landings? It's the same thing that made the flames right there. So it's just heavy gloss gel that's just brushed on. You can uh, check out all of our past sessions. They're just like YouTube videos, really. Now, I'm glad that you're able to hang in there. Uh, let's see. Art Plus, she says that Charlie says it's time to let go of anger and blame. Oh, that's really good. That's really good because Boromir says, well, I like that idea because then they won't get mad at me for taking the ring. He's like, dude, would you give me the ring back? He's like, what? What am I supposed to do? You, I have no pockets. You say take the ring. I take the ring. Now you're not happy. It's like, it's been like three months since I gave you that ring. It's like, well, I haven't had lots of bran in the last three months. There's just the stupid goblins here, man. They feed me junk. So sorry about, sorry about the little puppet shows there. You know that has to happen. Uh, let me grab it here. If I can, boom. Uh, whether it's Liquitex or Golden, this is the stuff that we use. Oh, well, you can use it for way more than just water because you can use it for icicles, like you see there on that branch. We also use it as water effects. So we've actually extended some of the water effects here with that. And then of course, on some of our ships, uh, that's not just painted on, that's actually that, that heavy gloss gel that we use to create the water effects there. And oh, so the flames on that sword, that is also the gloss gel. Uh, Whisker King, we do puppet shows all the time, all the time, uh, especially when people aren't looking, right? And where's our, uh, where's our done? So again, our, our done lendings, we did that. And where is, where's our, almost there, one second. Whoops, I think we went a little bit too far. Maybe not. Ah, here we go. So on the Balrog there, 
that's the old metal bow rug there are layers of flame effects that are added with that same heavy gloss gel and you can go back and watch all of those sessions where we're painting him you can see it even more from this angle so all, that is just like a bunch of big chunks of metal and we added all kinds of extra flame effects to it uh, steelhead everything is better with puppets right every movie is better when there's puppets in it I think I think Charlie is very much in favor of more puppets because well there is a isn't Charlie he is a sassicorn right uh, right plushy oh well also a sasshole but a sassicorn I think he's a sassicorn you know I might want this smoke to go uh, no it's good that it's crossing over the mountains there but also not if I made it any bigger, it's just going to be level with these sails. Not going to be a good thing. I think we hit, we don't have too much of a sharp edge there. That's been toned down. Go back to the water here, see if I can maybe add a couple of more of my wave effects in here. Just a few. Stuff that's going to be cutting right to our waves right here. So yeah, Plushy, uh, I don't know how many weeks ago, we started doing landscapes in Middle Earth because the terrain stuff with all the weather things, it kind of messed up the area that I was using for my uh, making my terrain stuff, at least prepping that. So we've been painting a whole bunch of these. Oh, and here we go. Look at, look at the differences in the sky. Now again, that is Prussian blue and our brilliant yellow pale. That is indigo and brilliant yellow pale uh, on the water here. So check, look at that. Same color, but with that little bit of it, look at, in our, but the water is still kind of the same idea, right? The way it goes towards the background. We have these larger waves up towards the front here, just like what we've done there. Uh, let's see. Arathu says that his mates, uh, they that they look say he looks like Boromir. Uh, let's see. And whenever I die, when we game, they go, "Oh, you had to die, Sean Bean." Oh, hey, Father Win, how you doing? Um, actually, well, we're gonna be doing much larger versions of these for our terrain board this that's the other thing we're doing is we're sort of getting a little bit of a practice here where's my easter links where did you guys go there they are so i think is it is it this one there we go so yeah there's a little bit of a backdrop painted behind it we will be painting these a little bit larger for some of our terrain now we used to do this for a living. We used to do the 2D art stuff. I guess we're going to start doing it again because uh, everybody just loves all the art stuff. Oh, yeah, there was a stream that we did two years ago. Yeah, so that kind of began the tradition of painting 2D art on stream. So this is a watercolor on hot press watercolor board. That's probably maybe 16 by 20. This one's around about the same size. A little Londo and Jakar that is also watercolors on hot press watercolor board. And uh, well, wait, 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 wait a second here. Look at this. Sorry. Hey, Drew, how are you doing? And uh, Lemon Demon, bookend kitties. So, Drew, how the heck are you doing? And everybody, it's time to sing happy birthday for Drew. And you all have to sing it like, what's her name? You all have to sing it like of uh, Marilyn Monroe. So that's how we're all going to sing happy birthday to Drew. And he's going to immediately regret that he ever rated us here. So Drew, happy birthday. Hopefully you had lots of stuff to, to, to make sure you weren't too thirsty on a Thursday. So we don't have, unfortunately, yeah, we don't have that. Well, we, we can do this. There we go. Because, uh, well, we don't have... Well, we could do that. <laughs> I'm just going to hit you with some sound effects there. 
So, yep, uh, Arathu is going to sing Happy Birthday for Drew, just like Marilyn Monroe. Actually, just with a little bit more of a sleazy factor to it, I think. Ah, uh, I think so. I think so, Drew. Now, and if everybody, uh, you could please give Drew a follow. That would be sensational. So, so <laughs> sorry that we were... Uh, we were showing folks some of the old 2D art back in the day, so sorry uh, that kind of uh, messed up your raid sound. Because it was supposed to say who enters my domain, but uh, we kind of we lost that a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So Arathu is uh, really uh, belting out the happy birthday right there for Drew. Now, Drew, was there anything uh, miniatures-wise that you bought yourself? Just as a, a little bit of a Drew time thing. Because you know, when else can you buy stuff for yourself if it ain't for your birthday? So yes, this is our part of our little landscape of Middle Earth series for the folks that are new here. Still painting these with oils, and here's some of the past ones that we've done. This was. Last week, a little bit of Edoras right there. Week before that, a little bit of Argonaut. Now, well, this was a tutorial that we filmed. The whole idea is to show that there's no differences between these and miniatures. And we're using the same paint on these that we use on our miniatures. So here's a little bit of Mordor that we did. And yes, there's no difference. We literally were using the same colors. He's like, uh, where's the Army of the Dead, man? They're we're supposed to like take care of these dudes. Of course, we know what happened. The army of the dead refuses. At least the horses, anyway. They don't want to go on that water. They're like not into getting wet. So the army of the dead, they're like, nope, not doing that. We'll just stay like dead for thousands more years. How do you like that, Aragorn? Uh, so spotty a shark, how are you doing? Ah, uh, let's see, Drew. Oh, thanks, Spotty is jerk. Uh, oh, here, let's show you. This is something that we do on Mondays. We paint Armada ships. And just knowing that I want to make some of these in 28 millimeter scale, then when I saw the Armada ships from Mantic, and I said, we got to do black sails on the orcs. So on Mondays, we've been painting up a whole bunch of Armada ships. Uh, but what was it that Drew got? Uh, a few sisters. May oh, because you've been doing the sisters. That's right. Uh, and I saw, I saw the uh, the picture of the the big brute earlier today. Yeah, I saw that. The dog's life is so miserable, right? Right, Drew. It is such a difficult life. Uh, it, it just makes you sad seeing how difficult that dog's life is, right? You just look at that and you say, "How does that dog make it through the day?" So, yeah, this is uh, one of our landscapes here. Uh, we still have some Rivendell to do, some Lothlorien. We want to do some Moria. We want to do the Dead Marshes, the Black Gate. So there's plenty of locales in Middle Earth, Middle Earth right, the Whisker King? Yeah, let's see. Where's some of our other, <clears throat> where's some of our other ships here? Ah, there we go. So we've, I think we've got got five completed Empire of Dust ships now, and then of course we painted the Dictator. That was one giant hunk of resin. Oh my gosh! And then we, well, we got started on the Orc fleet. I think we have three Orc ships painted, as well. Yes, uh, dogs and cats sleeping together. It's a, it, is that like the fifth sign of the apocalypse, Drew? Dogs and cats spooning together on the couch? I think it is. I, I think that is like the final sign of the apocalypse there. Uh, yeah, actually, well, I... Oh, man, you know... It would be all of a sudden Landrest, you just uh he had me thinking about uh taking a Mr. Potato Head and painting that up but like hyper realistic. 
with all kinds of realistic skin tones and stuff, but yet it's a it's still Mr. Potato Head. You know, you got to give him five o'clock shadow and everything, and some reflected light, and maybe some age spots too, because he's probably getting old. All right, I. Th I think I'm going to just sneak in a little bit more of my light color right here. We're just going to scumble that. See how little paint there is on the brush? This literally is the same way we paint our miniatures. With the same brushes, these same crazy scumbly brush strokes, lots of dry brush and such. Uh, land dressed up, but think of the eyes. Think of the eyes painted super realistically, right, Drew? Uh, maybe even with that, a little bit of uh, like a water effects over the top of it to just give it that extra little bit of glossiness. And but then instead of a a pipe in his hand, he might have a, like a a chain sword or something, maybe with some blood spatters on him. Because of course, what do you prefer, the chain fist or the power sword? I could swear that I saw Burnsy's uh, latest Instagram post today too. Could be wrong, but I think I did. Oh no, I got I got uh, he was I got his uh, alert. That's what I got. All right, that. I'm just gonna use my finger, blend that out. So I'm gonna try and get a little bit of the more of my lights over in this area now, if I can. Uh, but Arathu wants Mr. Potato Head piloting a dreadnought. Actually, oh, could uh, would Mrs. Potato Head be powering a penitent engine? Right, because uh, didn't they? Well, they did do a new penitent engine. That's uh, it's in the book and the box. And having tried to assemble the old metal one, uh, definitely looking forward more to the plastic one. That's for sure. Ah, yeah, a couple of our waves right here. Darken this down by lightening that up. So these, I don't need to make those waves any darker. I just have to bring in some more lights, and that works well. I think this is, oh, yeah, this was our, our video that we just filmed right here. It was kind of fun. I have to say, painting after painting hundreds and well, maybe thousands of Space Marines, the old ones, these uh, Primaris Marines, they are definitely more more interesting to paint. I gotta say. And then, of course, well, where's our Corsairs of Umbar miniatures? We're gonna be using uh, these guys here for our Corsairs of Umbar, and we're gonna sculpt. Uh, we're gonna make 28 millimeter. Corsair ships, of course, because, you know, why not? And then we can have uh, Battles of Middle-Earth <coughs> at sea, because Lord of the Rings rules will work for that. Let's see if I can't sneak in a couple of lighter waves here. You know, I might even, just for funsies, I'm going to actually play with some more Fire reflections here. Yeah, let's do that. A little bit of our fanchion red. Our Indian yellow over here. Which now we know how it's made. Yeah, so if your Indian yellow kind of smells like mangoes and, well, something else, now you know. Now you know why. Now, Spotty Shirk wants a glass of vodka in Mr. Potato Head's and the other hand. So, it, so a chain sword and some vodka, or, <laughs> or we give him a Molotov cocktail because then you could do object source lighting. Yes, uh, we we just give him a Molotov cocktail in his hand. It's like. All right, what what's going on back there? I smell vodka and I smell burning. It's like, dude, man, well, we got vodka back here, but what do you mean you smell burning? He's like, somebody set something on fire back there. He's like, oh, come on, man. I'm like standing on top of a frozen fuel tank. He's like, I'm going to stop this ride right now. So I kind of like the idea of uh, 
Mr. Potato Head with a Molotov cocktail because object source lighting. Who doesn't love object source lighting? We certainly love it here. Ah, yes. A couple of things that this does. It also carries our center of interest over this way a little bit more. I don't know how much more I want to lighten this. So I think Landrest is immediately going to go uh, through every single listing on my mini factory and any other 3D STL file listing and just make sure that he hides them all from me. Because I'm sure there's an STL file of Mr. a somewhat Mr. Potato Head out there. Or Mr. Spud Face. <laughs> Is that what we call him to avoid copyright violations, Mr. Spud Face? Now, there's the ones that are on the screen here in the corners. But then there's some other ones that I have. Ironically enough, there was one with the three hunters that are kind of standing there as the uh, Corsairs are kind of taunting them as they sail past. But we already did that on our Edoras painting. Well, three hunters plus Gandalf, right? So this ship here, there's just that little bit of warmth in it. I don't want to lose that, but it's kind of a balance. Too much of that warmth right there, and it's going to come too far forward and be a rival to this. Uh, so it, it's not, it's quite good. A lot of changes, but we just got to adapt, and a lot of people are crying because they want, uh, ah, because they want to keep their overpowered stuff. Again, drivers, right? There's barely any paint on that brush. But I think I might try and look at look at how we're just scumbling this. See that nice uh nice and easy scumbling there. And if you remember what this looked like in the beginning, all we did was we just took some of the thinner, some of and we just uh, where's that big old brush? We took this and we just really fast, right? Just like something we would do it for our pre-glaze. I don't want to darken these clouds down as much as these guys here. But I have to say, this is really the first non-sunny sky that we've painted I think well, outside of the Mordor stuff but that kind of <laughs> that does a kind of that kind of is a whole category unto itself again just uh, it's the it's the favorite dance that everybody's doing it's the scumble everybody's doing the scumble now now oh, it's a big monsters with good armor saves and stuff that deals damage that doesn't go against armor saves like magic well, hopefully Ossiarchs are now the most overpowered army ever. Not that I play Ossiarchs, it's just it would be a little bit of Tomb King's Vengeance. Of course, uh, who knows when square basing actually does return. Obviously, they, they've done those little sneak hints and previews. And they have said it's not going to be it's not going to be War Master or something small. It's going to be actually Warhammer. All right, let me get not just darker here, but also to kind of reinforcing that edge. Yeah, Whisker King, the last. Uh, I did a, basically a, an intro game of Lord of the Rings for somebody in February or January of 2020, and that is the last thing of any type that I played. I had hoped to be able to do the Lord of the Rings battle reports, but all that the, the camera setup just didn't quite work the way I had hoped it was going to. 
but maybe in the end it just kind of works out especially i didn't know at the time that i was going to my phones were going to get wiped out by 5g so who knows maybe there's something there that we can do all right uh, let's see. So yeah, I heard uh, I read that the Osiarchs were uh, they were some bad hombres. They were some nasty dudes. And I'm still thinking about uh, doing the uh, Osiarchs for Warcry. Yes, because they have the cards for them, courtesy of Armored Wolf. And then of course we've got uh, these guys that I would love to assemble so that I could paint these on stream, like the rest of our Osiarchs, of course. Yeah, steelhead. Um, well, I guess anything would be better than the hideous tomb kings that they did back in the day. That was just an absolute abomination, sadly. Here, let's make that a little lighter. Just bring out the, the clouds this way a little more. I'm going to use my finger here again. Okay, now does, uh, I've been looking a couple of times to see if there's anybody else streaming. Uh, there is nobody. <laughs> I got nobody streaming right now, at least nobody that I follow or know. So I don't know if there's anybody out there uh, so, yeah, Steelhead, they were the, well, of course, the old, well, here we go. We can show you. This was the old Tomb King's arm. I think you've seen this before here. I mean, it's taking me longer to scroll up there than I thought. But this was my 2014 Fantasy Army, which got barely no time at all. Because within about a month or so of me actually starting to play the army that's when they blew up the old world and also blew up this army and it all went away and this was lots of scratch sculpting especially all the stuff on top there that was all scratch sculpted yeah those weren't conversions those were scratch sculpts up there because well they didn't they never made those figures so that was uh that was definitely sad face didn't enjoy that at all. That's uh, let's see. Then we went to Wild West Exodus, and ultimately to Bolt Action. Ah, oh, thanks, Angry Ham. Uh, yeah, Whisker King. I just uh, I looked around. I didn't see anybody that was uh, on my list of folks that I follow. And I don't even know. Let's see. Uh, Yeah, Steelhead, uh, and of course, I tried playing that in a tournament. Well, even the test games that I tried to do just to get used to the army were basically over by turn one. And then in the tournament, every single game that I played was over by turn one. There was pretty much no point in playing the rest of the game. Uh, there was one game where the entire army was shot off the board, and I think it was 18 minutes. So I actually have something like two hours and 12 minutes to go have food. And it was, I never ate so well at any tournament as I did that tournament where I had the Tomb Kings. It was fantastic in a way that wasn't. Uh, so Whisker King is sculpting. Uh, actually, yeah, Whisker King, uh, we do, well, we do sculpting here, right? We've done a whole bunch of sculpting streams. It's where we sculpted this. And it's really fun to see digital sculptors. I know we've rated a few digital sculptors because it's kind of fun to watch. But now that it is 229 here, I just uh, I have to go check on some other things. I wish we could keep going. But again, another one of our landscapes of Middle Earth here. And uh, let's see, Arathus needs to find a fancy sword, the skill of a demon prince. Uh, I don't know what GW bits are there. I 
there, I'm sure there's a bazillion different 3D printing things. No doubt about that. So, and again, if everyone could also please give Armored Wolf a follow on Instagram and also check out Armored Wolf's Etsy page because Armored Wolf is the bestest moderator on all of Twitch by far. Uh, oh, and Neryfield just posted the pangolin. Uh, so, Neryfield, uh, is that something uh, that a bard would play? A bard would play a pangolin? And how do you know that your pangolin is actually still in tune? <laughs>